My name on Facebook is Melisine, another bloody model. Because, I mean, apparently it's mandatory on Facebook to have a surname. When I started, I didn't really take it that seriously. I thought, there's so many girls that call themselves models, and I, I suppose I'd just be another bloody internet model, another bloody alternative model, and yeah, it kind of just stuck, and then, yeah, anything related to what I do is just another bloody. I turn up at shoots sometimes, like, and people are just like, wait, where is she? Like, oh, she's down there. You're the model? Yeah, yeah, sorry to disappoint you, kind of thing. And they're like, oh. Oh, okay, just like, just give me five minutes and I'll do myself up and yeah, you won't recognise me soon. And I look completely different, it's weird. Um, what am I, five foot three? To normal people anyway, but on a good day in front of the camera, if I'm working, I'm five foot nine. And if I'm talking to someone in the industry, I'm five foot five or five foot six. But yeah, no, really, I'm, I'm five foot three. I seem to become something else in front of the camera, in height and also in energy. Um, like people don't recognise me, so it's my title should be illusionist rather than model. I think nine times out of ten, why they look awkward is because they feel uncomfortable, and it, it's it's yeah, it's kind of annoying like that because it's almost a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's like oh, I look like shit, so but no, no, try and be confident. But you can tell like what they're thinking deep down, like you can read them like a book. So I think you just have to get more comfortable in your skin, really. And I mean, uh, first time I saw myself on video, I couldn't watch the whole thing. Like, it's so different to seeing yourself in a photograph where it's all really controlled and, and well, you don't hear your own voice for a start. But the way to get around that, I just had to keep watching it over and over and over again until I got used to it. And yeah, eventually, you mean, you never sort of love what you see, but you do get used to it and you accept yourself. It's just like, yeah, that's how I am. And it's always completely different to what it is in your head. I can never pinpoint one particular picture or even like one particular person who I enjoy working with. I've kind of got a group of people I always love working with, but I mean, I love variety, so I don't like to get trapped in one particular style. I don't really like to be limited to, okay, she can only do that look. I always aim to do something that I least expect that I can do and what other people least expect of me, so stay one step ahead. So in that, I mean, sometimes my favourite picture from like a year ago, it, change, it completely changes and I'll hate it like a year later. So it's always evolving. So that's a really hard question, really. <laughs> but generally I like, I like work where you're thinking outside the box and there's a lot of intelligence behind it. It doesn't necessarily have to be conceptual, it could be just intelligent use of light or um, the emotion captured. I love like little moments, like little subtle sort of nuances rather than, um, you know, big kind of obvious gestures. And But then on the other, you know, on the other um, end of the scale, sometimes I really love really big poses and so it really just depends on what it is. So yeah, but generally I like innovation and being able to capture something I couldn't capture with anyone else. You want to do it so in real life you look like a tranny or a drag queen to be honest because I remember my first few shoots I mean I just did my makeup just as if I was going out at night you know to get pissed or whatever and but on camera like so you know in real life it looked quite heavy very smoky and all that on camera it just sort of yeah it kind of looked like I was wearing barely anything so um, yeah, keep in mind you do have to go a bit heavier, use powder, you don't want to look too shiny. Um, think about like where the light will hit you. So I always put highlighter on my cheekbones and like down the bridge of my nose, a little bit on my forehead and my chin. It just kind of brings out that definition and then contour of course. Um, with eyeshadow I've, I've found that matte colours work better. I find the shimmery stuff, I don't know what happens, it kind of like absorbs the light or something and it just kind of looks really messy whereas matte colours like they will come up really nicely. And, and you know, look really defined and vibrant in colour. So, yeah, but do you know what I mean? It's awesome if you've got a makeup artist, because I'm not a makeup artist. I've gotten better with makeup, but I'm still not amazing at it. So, probably not the best person to ask. Just okay. slap it on. I like MAC, I like Illamasqua. Foundation, I really like um, Chanel's foundation, actually. As expensive as it is, but um, I try not to put too much on, because I mean, you can break out if you're doing a lot of shoots at once. Um, yeah, it, it's really bad for your skin and just take it straight off once you're done with it. 
Um, but yeah, generally, I've sort of got a whole mixture in, in my bag. I've got really cheap stuff and then quite expensive stuff. It's just whatever colours I like, really, and, and what I use the most. I write a science blog called Another Bloody Science Blog where I pretty much just take the piss out of science as a way of getting people more interested in the subject. Um, and because I think science communication is, is really important, especially at a time right now we have issues like climate change. It's like, no, the public needs to be informed about this stuff. And, but how do you get them interested in, in something as dry and boring as science? It's like, well, no, actually, it's not dry and boring if you talk about it in a way that where people recognise the language you're using and it's a little bit more informal and it's got humour in it and you swear a lot, oh, people love that. <laughs> yeah, I love the challenge of talking about science, especially doing what I do. I don't look like a scientist, I don't really talk like a scientist, I don't act like a scientist, so it's just an opportunity to sort of reach a different kind of crowd. Know yourself, okay? Like, know what your strengths are and know what your weaknesses are. Um, everyone's got their limitations. Aim for versatility. Do as much as you can in terms of different styles. I mean, that's, that's I think that's why I do well is because I can sort of morph into a lot of different looks. And it's especially um, if, you know, you're a bit shorter or you're not quite the right measurements or, you know, you've got a certain look that might not fit into the mainstream. It's best to try and, and spread yourself out as, light as possible. Um, work with the best people that you can. Don't just think, I need the practice. I'm going to shoot with like a hundred dudes with just ca like digital cameras or with their iPhones and that'll be good practice. It's like, no, no, it won't. You'll probably just get a lot of shitty shots that just make you feel bad about yourself and you'll pick up bad habits. So have like a wish list of people you want to work with and make sure they're the best that you can possibly attain and you'll learn from them, you know, and they'll, they'll teach you and, and you'll get some amazing photos to start off with.